to share just a couple of slides. I'm just going to give a really brief overview uh, before we chat with Kendra, but obviously there will be lots of time at the end to, to ask any questions. Um, so at the moment, so we're really excited to be launching the first full year of the SEND Developmental Peer Review uh, in 24-25. We're currently uh, running our pilot cohort, uh, which Kendra is involved in, and we're receiving really, really positive feedback from, from schools participating in that. And we're really looking forward um, to welcoming even more schools um, to uh, the 24-25 cohort. Um, so the primary purpose uh, of this programme is really around sharing knowledge uh, to further provision and outcomes uh, for SEM pupils who are attending mainstream schools uh, through peer challenge and support in a, in a really developmental context. Um, so just to um, point out some of the key aspects of the programme. Uh, so firstly, you'll be working uh, this program is based on our trio model. So you'll be matched in a group of three schools and, and work with those schools throughout the program um, and with opportunities for you to learn from each other, have really insightful discussions and perhaps co-create ideas and solutions to, to common challenges that you may be facing. And, and you're able to really build up those relationships over the year um, in order to have those, you know, some of those difficult uh, conversations around what we know is a really, really challenging area right now. Um, the second thing, you'll uh, have access to the Evaluate My School platform, which is an expert designed uh, self-evaluation tool, uh, which you will do uh, to, you can, you firstly to, to benchmark yourselves at the start of the programme and, and really help you and, and your colleagues uh, in, on your team to really think about what, what are some of the, not only the challenges that we're facing, but, but also what, what are the strengths? What, what are we doing really well? Uh, and then you will move into these uh, expert facilitated in-school review days. So you'll have one day in your own school, then you will go out and visit two other schools. Um, and these days are carefully uh, structured and, and planned to make sure that there's really high quality uh, knowledge exchange happening um, and really make sure that there are really meaningful learning opportunities for yourself. And, and also those, those perhaps those uh, moments for a bit of peer challenge and, and really constructive challenge to help you to really push on your thinking so that you can really um, do, do the best for, for those SEND pupils that, that you're supporting. Um, and so based on what we're learning from schools taking part in the pilot and, and, and the evaluation that we're doing so far, some of the benefits of the program. So this is we're in designing this program we've really drawn on what we know works really well on our on our programs we have over 13 years of experience in delivering peer reviews uh, and this review is very very much it's uh developmental it's meant to be it's really based on that model of peer challenge peer support um it's a 50 50 model so not only the host school really benefits but you you will benefit from visiting other schools and being able to take back ideas and knowledge to your own school some of the feedback has said that leaders really appreciate this really ring fence time to really focus on send. There's so much going on uh, for you every day in school and, and having that, that really high quality time to really, really focus with colleagues who are all uh, like minded and also really um, engaged in this topic is incredibly valuable uh, with the involvement of both uh, a senior leader and the SENCO as well. Uh, you get to go out, you might be able to visit schools in different parts of the country and, and really learn from good practice elsewhere um, and have really supportive conversations um, in order to really uh, yeah, think about what, what might you be able to take and, and trial in your own school to really um, uh, improve, improve your practice. Um, and finally, your, you, each trio is matched with a, a lead facilitator. They all have incredibly strong SEND backgrounds. Um, so they will support you in, in planning the review day, thinking about what, um, what elements you want to focus on on that day. And then on the day, helping to guide conversations, make, make sure that, that those really high quality conversations and knowledge exchange uh, is happening. And then finally, just to uh, touch on the, the commitment of the programme and, and what it looks like. Um, so the launch event, so there'll be a one day launch event, which will be in London, uh, which is on the 9th of October. Again, so this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the first opportunity to meet the schools and colleagues that you'll be working with and also your lead facilitator. Um, we will have an expert keynote speaker. You'll learn more about the programme, receive training uh, on that Evaluate My School Self-Evaluation programme. 
Um, then you will complete the self-evaluation in your own school. And then following on from that, you will host one day and then go out and uh, two others, um, go visit two other schools. Uh, and then there will be a wrap up event. Uh, and at each of these uh, whole cohort events and visit days, we would be expecting um, the same two uh, colleagues from your school to take part. So one of whom will be either the head teacher or possibly a deputy with oversight of SEND and the SENG post. And it is and it is expected that you both take part throughout. And we know that having the consistency among the programme participants really means that, again, as I mentioned before, th those relationships can be built up really strongly and really create that space for you to have those really honest and sometimes vulnerable um, conversations. Um, so I hope that was really helpful. I'll be sticking around till the end. So if you do have any other questions for me, uh, please do let me know. But otherwise, I think I will pass back over to Tim. Thanks so much, Alice, and, and welcome to colleagues who have joined us. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, we, we're recording the session for anything which you might want to catch up on. Um, but it's lovely to have you joining us today. And thank you so much, Alice. Hopefully that gives attendees a... Um, a sort of flavour of, of the programme and sort of what, what sort of happens within it. But now let's hear from a uh, participant, Kendra, um, who uh, we're delighted to have joined us. Um, so Kendra, if I'm um, able to ask you the first question, which is please can you give an introduction to yourself, your school and its context? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Director of SEND currently at Riverside Secondary School, which is in Barking in East London. Um, it's part of a learning um, partnership learning trust. Um, we've currently got... 1,436 students on roll. It's a mainstream provision. We've got 68 um, students on the SEND register, uh, 16 of those are EHC plans, and the remainder are SEND support. It's lower than the national and it's lower than our local average, but it's because we really have a philosophy of not purposefully over identifying SEND students. So only those students with special needs at a level that really demands above and beyond that we can't alone provide as a school would be identified as SEND support. I think we address the variable needs of those students with ho hopefully across the board, high quality first teaching and that wrap around with pastoral care. Um, our SEND stu students achieved really well at Riverside um, and last year's SEND Progress 8 was plus 1.9 um, in line with the rest of the school. So really happy with where we are at the moment. I'm also um, an advisory SENCO at the moment, two days a week in um, a school in Hornchurch, which is a partnership school that's in a very different place. They're just starting out on their journey. So it's really nice to, to be in both environments and take what I can from Riverside to there. And I think Challenge Partners has helped with that as well, um, the experience that I'm having with them. Um, me personally, I came to SEND um, because I've got a son with autism, he was diagnosed when he was three years old um, and I just felt like I needed to know everything I could about SDN so that I could be his advocate um, and be well equipped to get him the support he needed and then I completed my a degree in SEND with autism as my um, main focus and then 18 years later I ended up being where I am at, at Riverside so that's me and that's our, our school. Thank you so much. And and what's your school's experience been of the SEND developmental peer review so far as a participant and what have the benefits been? Okay, so Riverside's been a part of Challenge Partners um, East London Hub since 2020, I believe, and um, has participated in your other programmes, Growing the Top, the QAR. Um, and I think we were drawn to Challenge Partners because it allows participants and facilitators um, to engage in really rich conversations to reflect on areas of strength and areas for improvement and development. Um, and I think Challenge Partners does what it says on the tin, really. It challenges you to reflect on your practice in a, like a non-judgmental and um, honest way. Um, for us, for the SEND review, both as a participant and a facilitator, I think the experience has been an extremely positive one. I think the Evaluate My School tool to start off with is um, really prompted deeper thinking from all of us um, as a department. We sat around and did it together um, 
and it looks at all strands of sin. So it was it was great to to complete, and it enabled us to really focus on where we are as a school and where we want to go next. Um, and I think the whole process has really enabled the sharing of innovative ideas and being creative um, in ways to face the challenges that of a real a broken system really. Um, and instead of just saying, well, we can't do this, I think all of us working together really has strengthened what we can do to give the best that we can to the children that we, we support. Thank you so much. And have there been sort of any actions taken away from whether it's sort of visiting another school or, or receiving your own visit, uh, which you've yeah. sort of implemented in school? Yeah, so for myself, um, as the lead facilitator, um, I'm actually, as I said, in secondary, but the three schools that I've got as the lead facilitator are all primary schools. Um, I've actually taken away quite a lot from that. Um, I wasn't sure how much that was going to um, affect my practice, but it has quite a bit. Um, I think the thinking of it on a like a local level, with the primary schools are telling us now that um, they've seen a significant increase in the number of students that are non-verbal, and that by the end of key stage two, at the developmental age of between two and four. Um, so I, I think the being able to go into the primaries and see what they're doing is helping me to put things in place. And one thing I did really take that I really liked was something called knowledge scripts. Um, and it has like the keywords and the um, key facts for that unit of work that's coming up. And we've tried it in school since I came back from them and the student voice has been really good. They've said they like the visuals, they like the key facts and the vocabulary and it's all nice and clear and easy to remember. Um, so I think that's been really beneficial and it's really made me think about how important the links are between primary and secondary and how that will be crucial for the for the future. Um, and obviously I think it should work the other way around as well. So that that's my key takeaway as a lead facilitator. Brilliant. And just just on the um, you mentioned there the sort of lead facilitator role at the end there. What um, I suppose could you give a summary of of the role, sort of what that looks like on the day? Yeah, I think it's um, very much like a coaching role. Um, I think it's to um, enable conversations, make sure that everyone's thinking deeply and contributing, um, whether they're hosting or visiting, um, and it's about agreeing a way of working. Um, that's acceptable for all parties and I think the whole process starts with contracting, agreeing these terms um, such as being reflective and not judgmental, um, being open and honest, and being in the room, not answering emails. Like um, Alice said, the feedback was that people like to be away from school and have that time with no disturbance to really get down to the nitty gritty and, and really think and pick apart. I think if you're going to do it, you need to be open um, and to to open up and be honest um, and remember that no one is there to judge. It's not a judgmental thing. It's just having those really deep and rich conversations about how you can um, improve your practice. Um, so yeah, I think that that's the, the main role and there to guide it. If if the conversation's going a bit start stale, think of some probing questions that you can ask to get people back on track and and really thinking about the day. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, and you, you might have touched on it there, but um, in terms of the answer to my next question, but what would be your advice to a school who is new to the programme? Right, I think um, it's been such a great um, experience for me. Um, I think it working, you get to work with exceptional professionals from across the country um, and you get a real feel for the hard work that everybody's doing, um, striving for the best outcomes really for, for students we've sent. I think it really, really like that you can't learn too much. If, wherever your school is, whatever place they're at, um, you can't stop learning and you will always learn from, from the schools that you go to. Um, I think it, yeah, you can honestly explore your school um, 
and really think about your school's processes and plan next steps. And um, there was one quote that I looked up, um, and which I really like from Confucius, who said, he who learns but does not think is lost, he who thinks but does not learn is in great danger. And I think wherever your school is on the journey, we can't stop reflecting and learning for others. And I think that really sums up challenge partners for me as well, that whatever side you're on, whether you're hosting or, or you're um, visiting, you're going to come away with something. So I really recommend it. Whoever's thinking of it, do it. It's, it's It really is the best thing I've done. So. Oh, thank you so much, Kedra. I think that Confucius yeah. quote will probably be on our website. It sums up Challenge Partners ethos <laughs> so much, uh, so, so perfectly. So, yeah, you, you found the perfect quote. And um, just my final question before I hand over to attendees um, for any questions which they might have. Um, is there any or are there, are there any other elements of the SEND developmental peer review or maybe sort of Challenge Partners more widely, which you'd like to just uh, sort of um, raise uh, whilst we have you? Um, I think um, regarding the lead facilitator role, um, just that the training was really brilliant that we received before that, the introduction to the other schools, um, there's constant um, communication between yourself and challenge partners, that with them checking in to make sure that everything's running smoothly, um, so you get a lot of support in that respect. Um, yeah, so again, do it. <laughs> 